Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, today's lecture will focus on income elasticity. So as we talked about before in the past about elasticity of demand and supply, we know that elasticity measures the responsiveness of consumers when there is a price change. In this case, we're going to measure how fast elastic or how slow inelastic consumers' responses are when your income changes. And like the equation we looked at for price elasticity, we know that we have big E for elasticity. And instead of lowercase p sub p, we're going to have sub i for income elasticity. And from here, we can then go further and look at what two factors are going to determine uh, our income elasticity. We know that quantity will always be on the numerator and income will be on the denominator. And because quantity depends on your income or income determines what we buy, which would make sense in the real world. Now we could see a type of relationship with the goods you consume based on your income and we can call the relationship normal or inferior goods. So if we have a number that yields a positive sign, we could then say with confidence that the good is a normal good to your income. And if we get a negative sign, we could then say with confidence that the good is inferior with respect to your income. And to kind of show that why we get a positive, normal, negative, inferior, we have to go back to our equation of big E sub I. Let's say that your income increases and at the same time, the quantity that you consume also increases. So we know that on the numerator, we are going to have a positive value. It is increasing. And on the denominator, we're going to have a positive value, also increasing. So when you have a positive or a positive, you will get a positive value. And this represents a normal good. At the same time, if your income increases, but now you consume less. We can now focus on the negative value over the positive value, which gives us a negative value. And this would then say that the good is an inferior good with respect to your income. So to be able to see this in the limelight, we need to look at some examples. So we have a couple of equations we can use namely the equation that is already in percent format, we can then rewrite the equation as such. E sub i is a function of the percent change in quantity over the percent change in, well, not price, income. So if we have numbers already in percent format, all that we have to do is simply plug it in. So for example, if we were to have, let's say, income increases by 5%, thus increases quantity by 2%, what is the income Elasticity. So hopefully now you had a chance to look at the question at hand and we can see that both numbers are already in percent format. So all that we have to do now is just plug in which represents quantity, in this case 2%, increases its positive and income is 5%, it's also increasing, so they're both positive. 
Now we can say that we have a positive 2 and a positive 5. And then now we can go ahead and calculate the answer. And once you have done that, you should get 0 0.40 as the answer. Now I'm going to rewrite 0 0.40 down here to show you that there is a two-part answer in our answer. We have a positive value overall, and we also have 0.4. So what we can say then with inelasticity is there is a two-part answer. The first part focuses on the actual sign itself. It's positive, so that means it's a normal good. And 0.4 represents elasticity. In this case, it is inelastic because 0.4 is less than 1. So what we can say is when there is an increase in income of 5%, your response is inelastic, slow to consume more of this good. And even though it's a normal good, even though your income is increasing, your income is not increasing enough to where you are going to consume the good at a faster rate.